All right, guys, the real Sharif M here, aka Mangana Steel, and we are going to talk about the last knife in the series here from Enrique Pena that I have, and that is this guy. This guy, I don't remember if there's a specific name for him, uh, but I affectionately call him the Pocket Scalpel because this thing is an evil little fixed blade that you can everyday carry that is perfect for damn near everyday tasks you can think of aside from like maybe taking down, you know, big boxes of cardboard. So take a look at this. We have a pseudo like clip point blade here and this guy is small. If you look at its overall length here versus let's say the trapper, it is even smaller than a trapper. It is tiny for sure. Uh, this guy is one of the limited releases he did. I don't think I've seen this on offer again since the original run. And it's just made out of a solid chunk of Riat uh, or Riat uh, M390. And I absolutely love this thing. As you can see in my uh, extra large to double extra large hands, it is a true three finger knife. I am almost butting up, well I definitely am butting up against that little corner edge here, but really nice plunge grind and this thing is devastatingly sharp, devastatingly sharp. This is a nice little slicer for any little tasks you can think of. The ergonomics are really, really good. Let me clear some of these guys out of the way and we will talk about this little fixed blade more in depth. So this guy really is just a true little pocket EDC knife. I personally put the lanyard on the end here just so I can get that little fourth finger to wrap around it. Gives me a little bit more control, I feel, over the blade. And it is beautifully, beautifully crowned. I don't know if that's going to show up on camera there. But every edge that makes contact with your hand is crowned. And every part except for just this wedge here. Is, is done in that fashion. Nice little bit of jimping right here. So when you get it into a saber grip, you have tremendous control over this blade. You're, you're not slipping, you're not kind of moving all around. And given for how sharp this knife really is, uh, I think that's a very, very good thing. Uh, now typically when I look at knife designs, I don't tend to like little sections like this right here. These points can become hot spots. Uh, however, given the overall thinness of this knife and the length of this knife, A, I'm glad it fits my hands. Otherwise, I would have turned around and sold this like right away. Uh, but in this particular case, it makes it feel way more secure and way more like I've got control over the knife. It's just gripping my ring finger there perfectly and I really feel like I have control over it. And then when I get it into a pinch grip like this, I can use my ring finger and put it exactly on that curve and that forces the, the, the spine of the blade or spine of the knife, I should say right into my palm and I can do very precise cuts with this. Full control over the blade tip. Really, really wonderful, wonderful ergonomics to this thing. Um, let's see how thick is the blade stock. It's coming at, in at 0.149 or in millimeters right at about 3.8 millimeters thick. So it's a little bit of a thicker boy, but 
It has this really nice flat grind. I'm almost surprised that he didn't go with a hollow grind for this, but I think it may be because of the overall thickness of the blade. This flat grind has been plenty, plenty thin um, to do any sort of cutting slicing tasks. I mean, really, I, I just, I can't express how much this thing is a slicing machine. Grab a little piece of paper here and it's just, like you can really get curly cues on the edges of the paper here so easily with this thing. It just, it's like shaving sharp. Like there's no question really. Like it just pops hair so easily and even like just running it over my skin a little bit f makes my skin feel raw so that's a uh, a credit to the overall geometry that he was able to achieve credit to riot for tremendous manufacturing uh and sharpening of the edge from the factory uh, i have never sharpened this honestly and it has been a little tiny workhorse in the time that I've used it. Uh, I admittedly don't carry this as often as I did when I first got it, uh, just because I have a, a plenty of knives, and this guy doesn't see rotation as much as I would like, uh, but it is one that I am not in a rush to pass on to anybody. Um, I really, really like this. I see its usefulness all the time, and I, I really enjoy it. Now, along with the knife, he included this little sheath here, which is really nicely done. It is fairly beefy, actually. I don't know if that's going to come through on the camera, but it's, like, way thicker than the blade, and... It's got this really, really strong pocket clip. So you just slide this guy into your pocket, slide this guy in. You can take the whole thing out and remove the blade, or you know, you can just pull the blade out, you know, do what you gotta do, and it, you gotta be very careful reinserting it, but just goes in so smooth has a nice little clip here, has the stamp for the Pena X series on the outside, and the quality of the leather, the quality of the construction is phenomenal. I mean, I don't understand why people bag on Chinese manufacturing. I mean, really, like, you can't call Chinese manufacturing and Riot, like, Garbage. You just can't. I mean, I don't know of many manufacturers, um, American or otherwise, that can match this outside of something that is like completely handmade. Really, you know. Uh, hold on a sec. Let me let me show you what I mean. These are two of my other uh, fixed blades. I, I have a small collection of fixed blades and I'm sure I'll do a video series on them. But we'll talk about this one second. This one is obviously, you know, a hinderer. You can see the hinderer logo stamped right there. And the big hinderer XM blade profile. I, I'm not a fan of the man, but man, this thing, I love this thing as a knife. This thing is a beast. And I unfortunately have not been camping or going outdoors as much lately, but 
the second I do, this guy is going to get a lot of use. I've just been waiting for the day so I can really put this guy to more proper use. And that's usually what I use my fixed plates for. But anyways, I digress. If you look at the sheath and the construction, you know, given this is a hinderer and this is American made, really the construction and quality of this and this are very similar, if not potentially giving the nod slightly to the Riot made one. Honestly, there's a little bit of like splitting right here, a little bit of inconsistency in the edge here. This side is a little bit better, you know, uh, but overall, I mean, this is an excellent sheath. I'm not going to, to really dog on it, you know, but to say that China can't match the quality just is beyond me. The only sheath that I can really think of that's better even than both of these is this guy. And this is done by Double X Knives. This is all handmade by the man. This is actually a custom EDC pocket knife here. This is one of his rare, you know, patterns. If I'm not mistaken, this is called the Warney Poon. And this is, I, I don't think he offers this. I, this may be a one of one, if I'm not mistaken. But this is, you know, without oogling and ogling over the, the the knife itself. This is a completely handmade, made in America sheath with all of this beautiful detailing on it. And again, nice pocket clip for, you know, everyday kind of carry retention and, and keeping it in your your pocket. And these two guys are not that far off. I mean, really, the construction, the finish is both really, really well done. So, again, these people who, who kind of dog on China are, are beyond me. Um, now, is something like this worth it? Oh, 100%. I mean, shit, man, this is like one of my favorite knives that I own. Um, and really, uh, I mean, how cool is that? <laughs> I mean, the whole thing is, is just beautiful. But anyways, uh, I digress. We're here to talk about Pena. <laughs> so anyways, back to this guy, the little pocket scalpel, as I like to call him. Really just like a well done, well executed everyday fixed blade for doing most of your tasks. I mean, I've even done light food prep with this guy, just, you know, using it in a pinch grip. The, the grip allows you to get fairly low on whatever you're cutting with just a little lift at the heel, you know, but if you want to slice through some tomatoes or cucumbers and whatever, like this guy will do it. You want to open up that Amazon package and you want something that's a little bit on the small side and discreet, this guy will do that, you know? And, yeah, I mean, it looks sexy. Like, there, there's just no way around it. I mean, look at that thing. That thing is just pretty. Just absolutely pretty. So, uh, I'm not sure what else to say about this guy, really, other than it just completes the, the collection that I have from Enrique, just another kind of really, really well executed knife design, as is everything that he does, quite frankly. I mean, I don't collect everything. I'm not a fan of every single pattern that the guy makes, obviously, else I would have more. Uh, I don't tend to be a big guy for like, the Apaches or, you know, some of the, like the Raptor or stuff like that. It's just not my taste. I tend to prefer something with a, 
a pointier tip for piercing tasks. Hence why you don't see me really rocking any kind of worn cliffy kind of designs. And there, there is like a worn cliff kind of version of this. Um, but for the selection that I have, you know, it really shows the talent and capability of Enrique Pena. And really, if you guys are into modern knives, you know, and you haven't looked at his stuff, open your eyes and take take a look, really. Like, his, his, his stuff's really amazing, and there's a reason why people pay, you know, top dollar for his customs. I mean, custom moolahs start at, I think, like around 750 and will go up to like $1,200, you know? Uh, all handmade, beautiful execution, you know, um, and same even with the trappers and the Lanny's clip slip joints, you know, they they really command top dollar uh, for a reason. The guy is a master of his craft. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little look and this series on Enrique Pena. If you guys have any comments or any questions, please drop them below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and um, I hope I catch you in the next one. Peace, love, and hair grease. Lates.